بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ہیلو ایوری ون ویلکم ٹو ٹیچر ڈیولپمنٹ ویبنارز مائی نیم زمان ڈیولپمنٹ ویبنار سوشل ایکشن پروجیکٹ ٹو سپورٹ ٹیچرز اینڈ ایجوکیٹرز اراؤنڈ دا ورلڈ وتھ پروفیشنل ڈیولپمنٹ اپرچونیٹیز اٹ از این انیشیٹو یوزنگ دا رائز ان آن لائن پروفیشنل ڈیولپمنٹ ٹو کنیکٹ پیپل فرام اراؤنڈ دا ورلڈ وتھ اپرچونیٹیز وچ دے مے ناٹ ہیو ہیڈ due to the old normal of face to face conferences what's the difference between for this webinar it's my prayer to introduce a penny jani penny jani is a currently an efp lecturer and course designer at the university of nottingham ningbo china apart from being a senior fellow at the higher education academy she is a phd candidate at lancaster university reading technology enhanced learning and e research her Research interests include how technology can transform the teaching and learning process in EAP and higher education in general. It's a pleasure having you at Teacher Development Webinars. Penny, welcome to Teacher Development Webinars. Hi, welcome everyone. I'm really excited to be here. Um, so it's a really, really interesting session. And the first thing I would like uh, to ask you is to have your smartphone in your hand, let me share my screen. Okay, so this is like a Mentimeter presentation. So of course, my presentation is via Mentimeter, okay? An application that uh, can help you design interactive presentations. So you have two options how to join uh, this presentation if you want to follow this online maybe you just need to observe maybe you just want to observe so you have two options you either go to www.menti.com and you enter the code or you can scan uh, the qr code uh, with your phone here in china we use wechat uh, in other countries maybe you use uh, a different uh, application to scan qr codes so this is the way to um, access this presentation. Uh, I can see someone sent us like a heart, okay? Um, so you can click on the heart to let me know that you're in, or you can uh, send me a message in the chat box so that I can uh, proceed with the presentation. I'm doing this now because I want to show you how easy it is to actually access a Mentimeter presentation, okay? And something you can do in class without um, without any prep time, okay? I can see more people are joining, okay? So I, I think I can leave for a minute uh, this, um, this instruction slide uh, because I think it's really, really important like for everyone to be able to access this presentation um, online live with us, okay? So the QR code is not present when you move into the slides, okay? Uh, but um, the passcode, uh, the password and the menti.com is always visible. I can see someone asking me, um, Zi Yang, I also live in China, okay? So maybe I should introduce myself again. I am Penny, I'm based in Ningbo, China, and Mentimeter is a website we use in our university, the University of Nottingham, Ningbo, China. So usually, no, we don't need any VPN to access Mentimeter as far as I know. So now, if you have access the presentation online, I will change uh, the slide, okay? So you will be able to follow the presentation on your smartphone or computer as well. So welcome to our webinar. I hope this session is very interesting for you. I chose Mentimeter for today's session because I think, as I mentioned, it's accessible uh, from any country in the world. It has multiple versions, both free and premium, okay? Also, this session is very useful for you, especially if you are a school manager, if you're a director of studies, if you have any kind of position uh, that is going to help you, you know, maybe buy an institutional account, okay? 
Uh, someone is asking about the duration of our webinar. Uh, so I'm going to present for about 40 minutes and then I'm going to leave 10 minutes for questions and answers. So let's move on. So who am I? Okay. Um, as the host mentioned very kindly, um, I'm an EAP lecturer at the University of Nottingham in Ningbo, China. I joined the university in 2019, just before the pandemic. I'm also doing my PhD at Lancaster University. I'm a big fan of technology. I also used to be uh, the coordinator of a special interest group within Balib. Uh, dealing with how we can use technology in English for academic purposes. So what I'm doing currently is teaching English for academic purposes. Uh, but Mentimeter is applicable to any kind of educational context. So now, if you're following the presentation online, you can see this slide, okay? What are you teaching at the moment? Okay, um, are you teaching English for specific purposes? Are you teaching English for academic purposes, ELT, young learners, adolescents, exam prep? So that would be very, very useful for me to be able to give you some uh, suggestions. Okay, also Mentimeter is very useful for higher education, big lecture rooms. Okay, it's a very versatile tool. Oh, I can see I have many colleagues. Okay, communication skills, functional English. That's very interesting as well. Intercultural communication. Amazing. Okay, EAP for STEM. Okay, I, I used to be uh, actually I'm course designer for STEM in uh, English for engineering, English for academic, English for uh, environmental studies. So I have used Mentimeter extensively. Okay, in sessional support. Okay, so now you can you can see how we can have like an interactive session. Okay, that's why the whole presentation is embedded within Mentimeter. So you can see how the student feels. Okay, at the same time, legal English, very interesting linguistics. Okay, so we have many, many people from higher education. This is very, very interesting. Okay. Now we can move on to the next slide. Do you use PowerPoint? Sometimes, yes, in every lesson. No, I don't. For example, in my context, in my university, all the material uh, is designed within PowerPoint. So everything is being given to us uh, with PowerPoint, despite the fact that we have an institutional um, account on a Mentimeter, okay? And I will explain to you how this works in our institution. Okay, yes, in every lesson. So sometimes, yes, um, PowerPoint can be very useful. I know it's something we all know. Many universities go for it, uh, but we can actually use Mentimeter and PowerPoint at the same time, okay? And we can make it more interactive okay so we can definitely deviate from powerpoint and create like a more interactive version so have you ever used mentimeter okay uh, i would like to know if we have people with previous experience okay i would love to know if you had like a positive experience like a negative experience okay i can see both the chat box and my mentimeter we can see most of the people know, some people yes. If you have used Mentimeter, you can write in the chat box one word, positive, negative, positive experience or negative experience. Okay, positive. I have used it every week. Okay, that's very useful. Uh, okay, no, I haven't. Okay, the vast majority hasn't, okay which is good also i would like to tell you that this presentation also will present the findings of my research okay this was part of my phd and i conducted some research with teachers and the use of mentimeter so we can see how we can make our lives easier using uh technology okay okay good okay let's move on so what is mentimeter for the people who haven't used it before and i can see this is like um, the vast 
uh, majority uh, in our webinar. I can see Sarah's uh, comment in the chat box. This is very, very useful. I'm going to go back in it um, during uh, the discussion. So what is Mentimeter? Mentimeter is a website that helps you build uh, interactive presentations. You can add uh, questions, polls, quizzes, slides, images, GIFs, and more to your presentation to create something more engaging and fun. For example, you can see now uh, how many answers and input you provided me uh, at the beginning of the webinar, okay? Um, your audience use their smartphones just like you did, but you can also use your iPad, you can also use your computer uh, to connect to the presentation and answer the questions live. You can visualize their answers in real time, just like we did, to create a fun and interactive experience. Um, once your Mentimeter presentation is over, you can share and you can export your results for further analysis and even compare data. Okay, it depends on your needs uh, and the nature of your classes. So why should we use Mentimeter to create impactful presentations and engage our audience? Okay, integrate, you can integrate your presentation into Zoom, Teams, PowerPoint and others. For example, um, uh, I am teaching uh, hybrid lessons all the time. Uh, last semester, uh, this semester, we are at the beginning of our semester and there is a very high possibility I'll be teaching uh, hybrid lessons uh, with uh, international students uh, from Taiwan, from South Korea, from Thailand, from various countries, while I have also my Chinese students in class. Um, it's very useful if you want to customize your presentations and become confident, okay? Um, for example, you can take your PowerPoint presentation and uh, import it into Mentimeter and add some interactivity. You can also get access to lots of additional resources, templates, there are many templates on the Mentimeter website. So it's a very versatile tell, like technolo technology tool, but the, the website provides a lot of input to help you um, navigate through the website. So some of the things you can do, some of the basic features, dynamic word clouds, a vibrant way to visualize your audience's ideas. I really like word clouds especially um, when I introduce a new topic to my students. Also in this session, I will give you some ideas uh, how to use Mentimeter and EAP and how you can adapt some, you know, basic um, activities. I also have some examples. Uh, so you can have um, live and instant polling. This is very useful in big lecture theatres or if you have shy students, just like I have. Um, entertaining quizzes. This is a very good alternative to Kahoot. So actually something very useful of Mentimeter is that you can have everything in one website. And also you can have informative Q and A's. So activities we can do, activities I personally do with my students, you can use it as a warm up. This is the most popular usage of Mentimeter. For example, lots of my colleagues um, they use Mentimeter to introduce a topic. Uh, they can do, you can do that either with a simple question or you can add an image and a question. You can do that only using a picture. Um, uh, you can check previous knowledge with this way. Um, so this is the most popular you know, way of using Mentimeter. So they use Mentimeter to start the class and then they move back to PowerPoint. We have the word clouds, as we mentioned, listening and reading comprehension. This is very useful, especially for listening, reflection. I believe Mentimeter, like, it's very, very useful in terms of reflection. It's completely anonymous, okay? Uh, so it's really useful if you want to ask your students at the end of the class, did you like the class? What did you learn today? Uh, what do you think you need to improve? What was your mistake? So anonymity is one of the most important features of Mentimeter, okay? Um, we have some people from China. I also live in China. 
so don't get offended but i believe um chinese students sometimes are a bit shy introverted um they don't want to lose face so this anonymity this anonymous environment really really helps them uh you know to express um their concerns um to express their preferences um it's it's very very useful and uh, if you're if you're teaching like in different contexts i can see some people from oman from the middle east from europe if you're teaching like different um learners i would love to know if anonymity helps your students you can use pictures and get reactions you can get their opinions again in a safe environment and also you can create online quizzes so instead of having for example kahoot and your powerpoint you can have your presentation and um and a quiz embedded So, for example, this is like the first type of question you can ask your learners. Uh, you can actually go and reply right now. What do you expect to learn from this session? That would be very, very useful. Maybe you can give me like more ideas to add more input uh, because I'm using Mentimeter for quite a long time, uh, even before our university buys um, an institutional account. Okay. Um, Okay, new ways of using Mentimeter in class. Okay, how to set it up. Maybe I can show you uh, how to set up like a question. Okay, if you've never used it before. Okay, let's take a minute. How, okay, in a fruitful way. Okay, I can also uh, share uh, how I am using it in my class. I've already shared some of the ways, but I will give um specific examples okay uh from uh the eap context okay i expect you know, this new tool the basics of mentimeter uh integrating mentimeter okay let me check out something okay okay integrate uh in the UP sessions we have many people right from um eap how okay port fun engaging start of lesson yes can we use it instead of powerpoint absolutely okay absolutely uh okay practical activities okay okay let's move on so you can see right now if you want to gather responses like very quickly as you can see from our session it's very very useful and very fast and effective imagine uh, most of you haven't used mentimeter before and you are able to engage and use it and log in uh, very quickly okay Okay, this is like the first, uh, the second activity I would like to show you. Um, there are many types of questions embedded in Mentimeter. It's not only the simple question we answered in the previous uh, slide. Actually, here you don't have to do anything. You can just uh, test how you can rate some of the statements. Okay, so instead of just asking an open ended question, you can also um, ask them, how would you rate these statements? So this is like a very useful question type, type of question to gather opinions. Strongly disagree, strongly agree. Okay, and then you can take the average and this can really, you know, develop your students' research skills and you can gather, you know, opinions um, in a very useful and fast way, okay, because this is what we really care about. Uh, next activity. For example, um, as you can see, this is an example of a quiz. Okay, if I click on enter right now, we will be able to see a uh, countdown. Okay, I clicked on. Okay, uh, okay, so you can see you can actually have why do we use citations? This is like a very typical example of um, of EAP, okay? So usually when we want to teach referencing skills, we ask our students at the beginning of the class, oh, why do we use citations, okay? 
So instead of having like a silent class, no one replies, you have to nominate the student, you can actually use Mentimeter. And this is like a quiz with a winner. And as you can see, it also has like a time limit, okay? This is like the countdown. Oh, time is up. And then you can see uh, the answers, okay, of all the students. And then you can have like the correct answer, okay? So yes, of course, you need to add alternative answers. That was just an example. So you're uh, to avoid play plagiarism and these answers, of course, are correct. So you can see this is like a very fast way to check previous knowledge, okay, and gather many, many responses at the same time, okay. Many people ask how to set up at the end of my presentation, I will actually go to the Mentimeter uh, website and show you step by step how you can create like a question. So what is the best way for you to learn? This is another thing you can ask your students. For example, if you're teaching um, reading, okay, um, you can ask them these type of questions to actually, this is very useful if you're doing your own needs analysis. We all know that in EAP environments, um, usually uh, we don't do uh, the needs analysis, the tutors, but the university does. But if you want to do your own version of needs analysis, you can ask them this type of question. And to be honest with you, you can see um, that we gather so many responses in an anonymous environment. Maybe um, some of the students don't want to reveal this type of information in public, okay? So mixed ways, role play. And actually, this is very, very useful for you to actually interpret the data you're collecting. We can see all the answers on the board. So you can see which one is the most popular, OK? Uh, uh, which one is the least popular, OK? And actually, because the students answer in real time, all of them at the same time, uh, they cannot really cheat, OK? Everyone is going to reply their, you know, their own preference. Um, so this is like another question that I would love to know your opinion. How does technology um, change how your students learn? Okay, what is your experience so far with using um, technology in your classes? Because I can see like with Mentimeter in my context, I can see that students are able to participate more, okay? It's much more uh, engaging. And here you can see I have embedded, um, I have chosen a different style of presenting the answer. So you could see in the previous questions, we had all the answers in speech bubbles on the board. Here we can see only one more engagement and you can actually use these arrows to go to the next one increased engagement okay students are comfortable with it so you can see different uh, ways of showing your results this is for example very useful if you are asking why do we use citations like a more specialized question that you want to explain and give feedback to each answer okay so this is, so this is very useful if you want to give feedback to each answer then you don't want the students to be distracted by having too many answers on the board. So different types of presenting data can lead to different learning activities. We can see they learn faster and easier, engaging, living in this digital age. Yes, absolutely agree. Maybe it's complicated, overcome some of the challenges of remote learning, passivity. Yes, effectively students have more fun more motivated so you can show the answers this way and you can discuss each answer give feedback and discuss with the students um this is like a different type of question you can ask your students add your ideas about using technology in this situation we use mentimeter just as a padlet i don't know if you know padlet so why do we use Padlet? Because we want our students to brainstorm, okay? Uh, we want them like to add uh, more ideas. And as you can see la now, like the word magic, okay, appears very, very big. So 
what we are doing here, we are creating a word cloud. So this is like an alternative to Padlet. You can gather responses. So again, instead of having Kahoot, uh, Padlet, PowerPoint, you can have everything embedded on Mentimeter. And personally, I'm someone who's using all of these applications. So the ability to have everything in one is very, very useful. Okay. Um, so you can see here we have our word cloud, fantastic, interactive, engaging. A word cloud can be very, very useful when we are teaching our students about academic style, academic words. We can have like a word cloud and we can see which words are academic, which words are not academic. So uh, we are talking about uh, multiple uh, types of activities with one slide. Okay. Uh, someone says, heard about it, never use it. If you're talking about Padlet, maybe this can be our next uh, a webinar, okay? I'm a huge advocate of Padlet, okay? Don't overuse, accountable engagement, engaging. Yes, so I think everyone agrees that technology creates like a more engaging lesson, especially if you're teaching hybrid. For example, last semester, I had two students, one based in Taiwan, uh, the other one based in Thailand. So Mentimeter was very useful for me to add these students to my classroom. Okay, here we can see a different type of activity. You can actually embed a video. It can be a YouTube video. It can be your own video, okay? Um, so you can uh, click play this is like a video about biofuels i used in my engineering and environmental science uh, class what i really like about mentimeter okay so sometimes uh we're doing a listening activity in our classes and we um tell the students to watch a youtube video and we all watch a youtube video in class and then we have some listening comprehension questions okay so what we're doing usually we go back to our PowerPoint or we give them a handout and there we have our questions. No, here actually students can watch the video, okay? And we can go to the next slide and we can have the questions. What I really like in this, uh, first of all, it's a competition, answer fast, get more points. Oh, no, 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 not this one, not this one, not this one. No, please, no. I made a mistake. I'm sorry. I want to stay into um, the video. So actually, what I really like about Mentimeter is that we can watch the video. I can have my video here or go to YouTube and watch it. And then I have my listening comprehension questions. You can have a multiple choice and open ended. You can have any type of question we would normally have in a listening test or in an activity like this. So instead of having on PowerPoint and not being aware, like, did my students really understand the video? Do they know things about the topic right now? So now we have Mentimeter and they answer in real time and we can see their answers on the board. And then we can decide if they understood uh, the topic, if they understood the content of the presentation of the video, or we need to go back and watch again, or if we need um to answer uh some questions or clarify a few things so this is what i really really like about mentimeter that we can ditch the powerpoint we can ditch like uh, uh the handout and we can have the listening answers on the board and we can really really know if our students really develop through this through this activity or we need to repeat it or maybe the video was too difficult. Maybe the questions were too difficult and they cannot answer them. And then we can change them. We can adapt the activity. So this is one of my favorite uh, features with Mentimeter. So here is like a different one. Yes, which word is not academic? So you can have like a multiple choice uh, on the board, a competition, okay, uh, again, this is one of my favorite activities at the beginning of the semester when we teach academic style. For example, this is something I'm going to use next week, week one of our classes. So you can have this type of competition similar to Kahoot. Okay. 
and then we can have like a leaderboard okay which is again um very very useful you can have like leaderboard just like kahoot i don't know if you're using kahoot or um mentioning kahoot all this time and you don't know it okay let's move on so let's get down to research right now okay so sometimes we use a tool we really like it but research and literature can really help our practice i am a huge advocate of um you know using the literature using research to inform uh, my classroom practice so now you can see uh, some of the literature review I have done uh, on Mentimeter. And actually, it's not only Mentimeter. Mentimeter is uh, one of the most popular um, audience response uh, uh, software. I can see someone, Linda said, sadly, I could have limited numbers. With Mentimeter, you don't have this problem. You, with Mentimeter, you have unlimited numbers, okay? Unless, I don't know, it can, it can host up to 1,000 people, okay? Uh, so if you have this problem with numbers, with Mentimeter, you won't have this problem. So what about the student experience? Um, we can see a strong positive impact on active learning and engagement, especially if we're talking about lectures. To be honest with you, I believe that any class with more than 10 people is actually a big class. It's impossible to ask every student every question. Um, it's impossible to be able to check the answers of all of these students. So yes, Mentimeter can be useful in any classroom with more than 10 people. Um, as you have realized, I really love anonymity, okay? So the anonymous feature of those, system, of those systems enables introverted students to participate in class without the fear of losing face and thus increasing their engagement, okay? Um, I find it very, very useful with my Chinese and generally Asian students. Uh, this anonymity, they can be really, really honest. Um, Another benefit, a very recent research from Mayhew 2020, higher content retention and a more inclusive learning experience. Uh, what about the teachers? Okay, teachers reported that, uh, Mayhew reported that teachers who used audience response systems and Mentimeter in particular felt a positive effect, but there are always some negatives. Um, some of them feel some teachers feel that they surrender the control of their lessons to the students, allow them to create the content of the class. So, for example, the students reply to the questions and then you have to uh, shift, you have to divert the discussion into a different you know, topic. And this is intimidating to many teachers. Yes, it can be very intimidating for a teacher, but it's, it's also very liberating for the student. Uh, it leads to student autonomy, a greater sense of uh, partnership, okay? Yes, it's intimidating for everyone, for me as well, but this way we can really... Actually, Mentimeter helps you to um, customize the lesson to the student's needs in real time, okay? Especially if you're an experienced tutor, I don't think you should be feeling um, this kind of fear. Common technical issues. Yes, common technical issues and other issues. They come with every type of technology. Maybe if you have issues with internet connection, that could be a, a problem. Students not having smartphones or laptops. They need to have something, okay? Either a smartphone um, or a laptop or an iPad, anything to be able to log in um, and answer. Time to design, time to learn. To be honest with you, sometimes I go to my classroom, a question comes into my mind and I set it up five minutes before the beginning of my class, okay? So, I don't think Mentimeter is a difficult tool to learn, okay? It's, it's, you need, there is some learning curve if, if you want to do advanced things, but if you want to design like a simple question, simple quiz, I don't think it's going to be 
challenging, okay? A premium or free version. Actually, if you really like this tool, this is something you could do. You can go to your uh, head of department if you work in a university, you can go. Um, uh, you can go to the manager of your institution and actually propose Mentimeter. Especially if you're use, if you're working in a university, I don't think this is going to be very very uh, difficult. Before University of Nottingham buys Mentimeter, I actually had the premium version myself. Uh, I don't think it's too expensive. Okay. Um, and you can actually share it with another tutor. This can be very, very useful. But um, if you like it, I don't think uh, it will hurt if you go and propose to your university to actually use it. Um, yes, free version is quite limited, but to be honest with you, even if you're just using the word cloud or the simple questions, this can make all the difference, especially at the beginning of the class to start your lesson in a more engaging and fun way. Okay, I can see, I can see. I'm really, really sad. I hope Mentimeter can give like more discounts uh, to the teachers to be able to um, access Mentimeter. These are uh, the findings of my research. Uh, to be honest with you, we always care about the students' feelings, the student experience, but what about the teachers? Teachers work a lot. And I believe one of the major barriers uh, on the integration of technology in the classroom, in any type of classroom, is the teachers and time, as you can see in my um, results. This is the major barrier. Time to learn, time to design, time to think. You have your book in front of you, you have your PowerPoint in front of you, and you need time to think which questions to ask, which tasks uh, to redesign. In one of the interviews I, um, I did, one of the tutors said, I would use it every single time if there was someone designing the presentations, okay? Um, so yes, time can be an issue, but I, I told you like sometimes I go to the classroom, a question comes into my mind and I designed the Mentimeter question right away. Minor issues with Mentimeter, digital skills. You don't need to be advanced users of technology to be able to use it. Overall ease of use, uh, classroom management. Some people reported that students get overexcited, especially if we're doing like a debate and we can see multiple opinions on the screen. Uh, in our context, because I conducted my research in our university, cost and funding, because the university bought an institutional account, this is solved. But if we didn't, I assume this is like a major barrier, cost and funding and the features of the free version. Uh, infrastructure, do we have all, do all the students have like a smartphone, a laptop, um, setting up it, everyone agreed that this is like a relatively easy um easy thing to do uh so if you want to learn more okay uh a part of my phd is like to design some online courses to help other tutors to learn more things about technology i'm designing something right now so you can um uh, oops fuck i need to go back so you like if you can see this slide you will be able to see a form so this is another very, very useful of Mentimeter. Um, if you have paid some money, you can actually embed a form in your presentation. This may not be so useful, like for educational purposes. It's very useful if you're doing some teacher training, okay? Uh, or it can be very useful for your classes. It may be like a form to find students' preferences, needs analysis. So if you can see this slide, you can actually um, type in your name and your email, and then I can get in touch with you. And maybe, not only Mentimeter, I, maybe I can get touch, in touch with you for the webinars I'm organizing about various tools like uh, Padlet, Adoflow, how to uh, design your own Moodle page, how to add H5P, how to record screencasts, and many, many, many other things. Uh, so now I know that this is like many people wanted 
that, maybe I can go back on my Mentimeter. Uh, you can, uh, Margot, you can add your um, email to the form, okay? And, or you can send me an email, okay? I'm attaching my email, okay? So you don't have to share your email in public, but I can go back to my Mentimeter, uh, come on. Also like Mentimeter is very useful if you are uh, presenting at conferences, okay? It's very, very useful. Oh, now why? We have, we're going like um, a typhoon right now here in China. Uh, so I'm not really confident or we can go back. Not, not this one, not this one. Okay. Reset results, not full screen. Uh, voting. Ah, here, for example, you can enable questions from audience. So you can ask your audience. Anyway, it's fine. Um, I will try to again. Okay, my presentations from Mentimeter. So I really want to show you how you can set this up, even if you go to your classroom nine o'clock in the morning and um, a question came up to your mind and you want to ask um, your students like a specific question. I don't know why Mentimeter doesn't cooperate right now. Oops, okay. Mm -hmm. This typhoon has derailed uh, our technology, okay. Um, you can actually use this presentation multiple times. You can see you can reset the results uh because this is one of the drawbacks uh ah yes oh no no like rebecca this is like an embedded feature you can add uh to your presentation while you're teaching okay so students can actually send you the questions uh in real time okay so i think yes okay so uh you can see i have many many presentations <laughs> okay from my classes i use it all the time so you can actually click on new presentation let's name this a test so you can create a presentation okay new slide you can select slide type multiple choice word cloud open-ended ranking you can have also content slides just like PowerPoint with heading, paragraph, bullets. Oops, yes, this that was a bullet. Image, you can embed documents, video, uh, big text, quote, numbers, instructions. Here you have advanced um, questions. But let's, let's go for this one, like a multiple choice. Uh, for example, have you used Mentimeter? For example, yes, no, sometimes. So it took me one minute to create like a simple question and start my lesson in a fun and um, engaging way. Um, Sarah, like for example, how you can add a listening. First of all, you need to add the video, okay? So usually, especially in EAP, we use videos, uh, video caption. So here you can use like the URL. So you can have a YouTube URL, or for example, if you have your own screencast, you, you can add the link of your screencast from Panopto, for example, okay? So for example, you add your video, you can also customize this, okay? And then, you click on new slide and then you can add your questions okay multiple choice you can even add more questions guess the number okay truth or lie arrows you can have different types of question but i suppose like for a listening test you will have multiple choice open-ended okay for them to answer you can select the answer again uh, you can type the answer as well. So uh, you create the slides with your question. So one 
question per slide, okay? So you have your question, you can see the answers. So you can stop in each question and you can say, oh, this is correct, this is wrong. How many people got this right? How many people got this wrong, okay? And this can be very, very um, useful for everyone. Um, how do the students access the question? It's very, very useful if you have a test like this, if the students access the presentation at the beginning of the lesson, either with a QR code or by adding the code to menti.com. So they follow, follow the presentation. Um, uh, actually, there are two options. Uh, either the teacher decides the pace or the students decide the pace. Uh, if they, if you want the students to decide the pace, you cannot have quizzes. Okay. Uh, okay. So, um, any other questions? Oh, okay. Thank you so can... much, Penny, for such an engaging session. I really appreciate this time for uh, today's webinar. So, I think this is time for questions, and we do have uh, some questions. Uh, Elena asks, can you use institutional PowerPoint templates for your slide? Um, yes, actually, if we go, if you click on this one, if you click mm -hmm. on this button, you can import your presentation, either PowerPoint or um, Google Slides. You can actually import a PDF and make it an interactive presentation. And actually, you can have up to 100 slides. That sounds cool. So uh, Jennifer asked, how easy is it to import a PPT directly into Mintimeter? And can you do this on a free version? OK. Um, I will show you. I have a presentation ready. Because if you want to import your presentation, it depends on your slides and the content. It can take um, a few moments. OK. Uh, so let me see. I have animal communication. I have lesson one from engineering our work okay so i can have um okay let me try maybe okay how we can embed powerpoint presentation um someone is asking a very interesting question yes uh you can actually share your Mentimeter presentations um, with other students, with other teachers, and you can actually collaborate and create a presentation together. So this is like my first tip, if you want to use it in your classroom, in your lessons, if you are too many teachers, actually you can share an account, share the cost, and you can actually collaborate and create your own presentations. As you can see, I just clicked on my presentation and now it's converting. And as you can see, large presentations may take several minutes to finish. So to summarize, like with, with especially EAP uh, learners, um, I would advise you to use it as a warm up, uh, quiz competition, if you want to do a debate, if you want to gather, if you want to collect opinions. Um, I'm not sure if you can import with a free version, but you can actually use the trial period. Uh, I'm sure there's going to be some trial period on Mentimeter. So I hope this session was interesting for you. OK, uh, Mentimeter is quite versatile, so you can explore it with your trial version. And also you can send an email to your IT department in your university <coughs> and maybe they will buy an institutional account. I can see many uh, universities, especially in the UK, they have bought Padlet institutional accounts. So I don't see the reason why not adding a Mentimeter account. Final comment for Thank me, you. it's a versatile mm -hmm. tool. And it can combine Padlet, Quizlet, many different applications into one. Thank you so, so much, Penny, for this wonderful session. Really appreciate it. And for this webinar, if you want a certificate for this webinar, you can email us at info.tdwebinars at the rate of gmail.com. 
please register for our future sessions on our website www.tdwebinars.org. We are available on all our social media channels, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, and recording for the session will also be available at Teacher Development Webinars YouTube channel. Please don't forget to share your takeaways from the session using hashtag TDWebinars and tag us at Twitter TD webinars. Thank you so much uh, to you, Penny, and thanks to all the participants. I can see the engagement in the chat box and all those things. Thank yous and wonderful comments. So yeah, it has been a fun and engaging uh, half an hour, fast an hour with you. Thank you very much. Thank Take you. Care. Thank Bye -bye. you very much for inviting me. I immensely, I enjoyed it so, so much.